I hope tomorrow will be a quiet day. Oh, I do. much for the books. They certainly were a big help. Did you find what you were looking for? Almost, but not quite. She's never satisfied. Well, we're always glad to help you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. help you? Are you the librarian? Yes. My name is Jones, Theodore Jones. Oh, yes, I believe I met your wife at the school tea. Probably. Uh, are these some books you want? No, actually some books I don't want. I don't understand. Well, I've been making a list, Miss... Uh... Mrs. Green. These are some books I found on the shelves. And you don't want them? Well, this list, Mrs. Green. Suppose you look at it and tell me if you think any of these books or any of these writers actually mean any good to us. I don't know. Well, this first book, Mrs. Green, this first writer, you know, of course, he's been exposed as a communist. The second, he's a well-known fellow traveler. Mr. Jones, we have books representing all sorts of views. Yes, so I see. Perhaps I'd better explain my position. Well, shall we go out to the desk? All right, fine. I was going to explain. Mrs. Green, there's a group of us. I don't want you to think I'm alone in this. A group here in this community, including a former judge, a clergyman, an investment banker, and so on. They asked me to drop in here and have a look around. We're comparing notes with similar groups in other communities. You see, Mrs. Green, we have children, and our children use our public libraries. I have children, too. Then what do you think? Do you think it's wise to pass out the propaganda of an enemy who would destroy every freedom we possess? Are we doing that? Well, this list. Do you approve of these books? Very likely not, but is that important? Mr. Jones, just what are you suggesting? I am suggesting, along with the others in our group, that it would be well if these books were removed from circulation. Well, how can we do that? Oh, come now, we're not that helpless. I don't blame you for being cautious, Mrs. Green. I understand I'm that... not being cautious at all. But we are supposed to be a free library for people who are free to read what they choose. Yes, I've heard that argument. And it reminds me that people were once free to get scarlet fever and to spread it just as they chose. But when we got wise, we adopted quarantine. Mrs. Green, I don't need to ask you what you think the communists would do if they had their way right here. I can imagine. And they're sure they will have their way, because they're confident we'll do half the job for them. And that's what we're doing when we support a library to disseminate their stuff. Why, in a sense, this library ought to have a small plaque reading Communist Information Center. I don't think that's true at all. You doubt these books are propaganda? Look at them. Look at the list. Even if I agreed with everything you said about all of these books, there's nothing I can do about it. Our policies are set by the library board. The only thing I can suggest is that you talk with them. When do they meet? Right here on Monday evening. I'll be here. Will you be here, Mrs. Green? Oh, yes. The board will probably want to know my own recommendation. Good. Sorry if I kept you. Not at all. Good night. Good night.
this list. Do you approve of this list? I wholly disapprove of what you say, but will defend to the death your right to say it. This first writer has been exposed as a communist. The second is a well-known fellow traveler. Though all the winds of doctrine were let loose to play upon the earth, so truth be in the field, we do injuriously by licensing and prohibiting. Let truth and falsehood grapple. Whoever knew truth put to the worst in a free and open encounter. Mrs. Green, there's a group of us. I don't want you to think I'm alone in this. A group here in this community, including a former judge, a clergyman, an investment banker, and so on. No official yet born on this earth is wise enough or generous enough to separate good ideas from bad ideas, good beliefs from bad beliefs. I'm suggesting, along with the others in our group, that it would be well if these books were removed from circulation. Books won't stay banned. They won't burn. Ideas won't go to jail. In the long run of history, the censor and the inquisitor have always lost. The only weapon against bad ideas is better ideas. If there be any among us who would wish to dissolve this union or to change its republican form, let them stand undisturbed as monuments of the safety with which error of opinion may be tolerated, where reason is left free to combat it. And so, as I walked through those stacks that other evening, wondering what to say to you, I thought of the voices who have already answered these arguments. But I remembered other voices, too. On our shelves, you will find the disputes of many centuries. Those men who spoke for monarchy, and those who spoke against it. Those who spoke for slavery, and those who spoke against it those who spoke for Hitler, and those who spoke against him. For always it has been our tradition that Americans have the right to read all sides, and that in that freedom is our strength. Now, at a recent meeting of the American Library Association, our council resolved to oppose any encroachment on this freedom to read. President Eisenhower sent a message to this meeting, and I'd like to quote from it. We must in these times be intelligently alert, not only to the fanatic cunning of the communist conspiracy, but to the grave dangers in meeting fanaticism with ignorance. There are some zealots who, with more wrath than wisdom, would adopt a strangely unintelligent course. They would try to defend freedom by denying freedom's friends the opportunity to study communism in its entirety, its plausibilities, its falsities, its weaknesses. But we know that freedom cannot be served by the devices of the tyrant. As it is an ancient truth that freedom cannot be legislated into existence, so it is no less obvious that freedom cannot be censored into existence. And any who act as if freedom's defenses are to be found in suppression and suspicion and fear, confess to a doctrine alien to America. 
I recommend that the request made by Mr. Jones and his group be rejected. Mr. Jones? My answer is brief. While we argue, they're working. They never stop. They're confident. Why shouldn't they be? We're doing their work. Citizens of our own country are supplying the books, the magazines, and the distribution. The communists take us from inside. They always do. Must we be that stupid? Do we have to aid our own destruction? Do any of you ladies and gentlemen think this is less than a war for survival? If this is, let me give a quotation too. Offense is the best defense. Ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you now. Mr. Jones and his associates ask the removal from our shelves of a list of books which they feel are dangerous. Mrs. Green says that such action would destroy our traditional rights, and she regards this as the greater danger. I think we all agree that a library can and must help us preserve our freedoms. How can it best serve that end? Is there further discussion? How can a library best serve our freedom? That has been the subject of our discussion. It is the kind of question that must be answered not only by library boards, but also by schools, churches, and community groups. In the end, it must be answered by you. You, the citizen, are the one whose freedom is at issue. So give it further thought, won't you? Because this is one of the problems that challenge our times.